Peace and blessings, y'all, in this corner of Boxing 24. Good afternoon. Good afternoon on this Sunday, the day after a dominating performance by Saul Canelo Alvarez, who got his 60th win. Listen, as I said earlier this morning after the fight, I touched on it. Canelo Alvarez is the greatest Mexican fighter in the history of that ethnicity, okay? The Mexican people, all right? He's the greatest fighter in Mexican history. I don't wanna hear about Chavez. I respect Salvador Sanchez, absolutely. Great fighter. And Chavez, great fighter. But Canelo Alvarez is on another level, okay? Because he has more meaningful wins than anybody in history, and he's been dominating for years. Chavez has wins that against people we don't know anything about, fighters we don't know anything about, for like 30, 40 fights, okay, out of his career. We don't even know those people, all right? And when he got to his first real test, what happened? He lost against Frankie Randall. So he got draws, he got suspect wins, okay? A, a draw against Sweet P. Whitaker who beat him. And he wound up getting a, <clears throat> a win against Sweet P that he shouldn't have, I mean, pardon me, against Meldrick Taylor. Listen, Canelo Alvarez is the greatest Mexican fighter of all time, bottom line, all right? Now, let me say this. Dominating performance last night, whether we like it or not, Jamel Charlo did to be great. Yes, he moved up to 168 pounds to challenge Canelo Alvarez. And if that's what you wanted to do, Charlo, because Canelo didn't call Charlo out. Charlo said he'd been wanting to fight Canelo for 10 years, right? So if that's what he said, then why people have a problem with Canelo going in there and doing what he did and winning the fight? I mean, Charlo is not walking around at 154 pounds, man, because he fight at that weight. He doesn't have a real big frame. He got a, 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 a lean, pretty good, nice frame. Not a big frame like Canelo, but he's still a big boy. He's not walking around at 154. He weighed in at 173. No, pardon me. He weighed in at 167 and a half and came in the fight at 172 to 173, which means what? He have to be walking around close to that weight that he that he came in at. So that was better for him. That was better for him to, 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 to not have to rehydrate so much, right? Absolutely. He did to be great and moved up 14 pounds. So that's, if that's what he wanted to do, then you give him credit for that. He tried and he failed. Yes, he went up against the best fighter that's fighting today besides Bud Crawford. Tank, Shakur, Boots. This is what he went up against, but he went up against the best super middleweight, all right? Because he did to do something different. And it didn't work out. But it's not about, yo, I didn't get knocked out. No, but he dominated you the whole fight. So some of the people he knocked out, he didn't dominate them the whole fight. Like He didn't dominate BJ Saunders the whole fight, but he stopped them. He didn't dominate Caleb Plant the whole fight, but he stopped them, right? Okay, then. So he dominated you the whole fight, Jamel. Just take it as what it is, all right? You Listen, I give Jamel Charlo a lot of credit because the shots that he took, especially them body shots, the me body shots, like a lot of other people wouldn't have been able to take that. He was able to do it. So you have to give him credit for that, okay? You got to give him a lot of credit. And yeah, he threw shots, he threw punches, he caught Canelo. Canelo got an iron chin. I said if it was going to be a stoppage, it was going to be Canelo, Charlo was not stopping him. He has an iron chin. They both got iron chins, though. Charlo could take it, man, even to the body, because them body shots was very, they were like thunderclaps, man. You could really hear them shots, man, like, boop, boop, like, pop, pop. Like, you could hear it. And he, 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 yo, he went through the fire, which says to me that at 154, man, he should have no problem unless Crawford steps up to fight him, or Jerron Boots Ennis. Anybody else at 154, he gonna have no problem. 
Tim Zhu, talking a lot, but you can't do nothing with Jamal Charlo at 154, okay? But um, let me say this, and this is how we take away from people. See, so if it's going to be an excuse made now that he, oh, he moved up 14 pounds, oh, he was off for 17 months. See, no excuses, man. You took the fight, all right? This is what you wanted to do. Now, as far as the weight is concerned, this is why Canelo, I see why Canelo says he don't want to fight Crawford. Because if he beats Crawford, what are you going to say? He was a naturally smaller man. He moved up. Same thing like you saying, Charlo moved up 14 pounds. For, for Crawford, it would be 21 pounds because he'd be coming from 47. So it's like, what credit do I get if I beat this naturally smaller man? So that's why he's saying he don't really want to do it. I get it. But if it makes sense... I'm sure he'll do it. Now, I think Canelo should wait for the winner of Benavidez and Andre. Go for that, because I think he can beat either one of them. He'll have a harder time with Benavidez, but I think he can break him down as well. Andre, I think he beats him easier, because we haven't really seen Andre uh, get tested. But then again, he, he, looks a he looks a little sus, but we don't know how he could take a shot from a hard puncher with speed like Canelo. I, I'm, not, I'm not impressed, pardon me, with, with Andre like that. I got to see something. So this, this Benavidez fight is going to show it, what he's really made of, right? But I think Canelo beats both of them. I think Canelo beats Andre more convincingly, all right? So I think he should wait on that fight and fight the winner. Try to get the rematch with Bivol. I think the 100% Canelo that we saw last night, he could do something different with Bill. Okay, I think he was just going for one shot. He was going for one um, one shot at a time in that fight. He was just trying to hit, hit him anywhere. But the way he threw the jab last night, the way he threw the right, the way he threw the hooks, the way he, he, he went to the body from side to side, how he was breaking down, he was patient. He threw more jabs in the fight than Charlo did, and Charlo's the jabber. If he fights like that against Bibble, he could do it. He could do it. He could beat Bibble. I, I, I say he could beat Bibble. But at the end of the day, Canelo is undisputed at 168, and he put more on the line. See, his belts was on the line, whereas if he would have lost, Charlo had those belts, and then he had the luxury to say, okay, I'm moving back down. Charlo's belts wasn't on the line. That's why he's going back down to 154 to finish his bidding because at the end of the day, Canelo didn't have anything to gain really from that part because he can't fight at 154. And for y'all that don't know boxing, man, learn it. Canelo been fighting, moved up from 147, man. And he went all the way to 175, but 168 seemed to be his weight and his best weight is probably 160, but 168, he's comfortable. 154, is he cannot do it. He just cannot do it. It's just too much for him at this stage of his career. He's been fighting since he was a teenager, man. All right? So he's been at 168 now. And again, he moved up, man, from 147. So that's what he knows his body and what he has to do to maintain it. So 154 is not going to happen. Crawford would have to move up to fight him. And that's a 50-50 fight. I love Crawford. I knew what he was going to do with Spence, and he's my number one guy, but, you know, can he take the shots from Canelo? Canelo lands some mean body shots, man. Can he take those head shots? Now, Crawford can land his too. Can Canelo take his shots? That's why I say it's a 50-50 fight, because Crawford definitely, is he's mean, and he's a killer. And Crawford is a, a, is a better boxer than Charles. See what I'm saying? He's a pure boxer, and he could switch on Canelo, you know? You come out southpaw, I mean, you know, be a problem. So it's definitely a 50-50 fight. I like Canelo very much. I respect him. I always thought that he's been a good fighter, clean fighter. And at the end of the day, man, that arena was sold out. All this comparison with UFC and if UFC was going to do this and that. Listen, man, that arena was sold out. He had legends there. He had the great Floyd Mayweather sitting there with his grandson watching him. Okay, Sugar Ray Leonard, legend. I mean, they come in to see Canelo, man, because he sold out that arena. Charlo had his fans, 
but Canelo is the biggest seller. Canelo, Tank, then it's been Errol Spence, and then we go down the line. Those are the top three. But Canelo, man, don't get it twisted, man. He brings the fans. He brings the heat. He brings the fight. And if he's 100% like he was healthy, it's very hard to beat that version of Canelo. And I hope that motivates him because I will say a knock on him is, is not fighting Benavidez. I think he needs to fight Benavidez. He needs to take that fight. Fight the winner, Canelo, of Benavidez and Andre. You need to do that. All right? Cement your legacy. Go out on top. Go out respectful. You got your 60th win. You only got two losses against the great Floyd Mayweather, against a great fighter in Dimitri Bivol, a naturally bigger man, good boxer, and it's okay. See if you can avenge that loss. And that's all you got to do, man. All right? But don't take away from a fighter like Canelo, man. He, he, he put in the work. He started out as a young boy. And he's doing what he does very well, okay? He's learned a lot from that Floyd Mayweather loss. Some of y'all keep talking about that. But you can't judge me on what happened 10 years ago. Judge me on what I'm doing right now. He got better. It took him a little while. It wasn't right after the Floyd Mayweather fight. It was actually after Lara that you started seeing the head movement. And you started seeing him slip and dip and, 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 and come in with that style and put his, his, put his guards up and be able to move. You know what I'm saying? That's when he started all of that. They really after that Lara fight, because that Lara fight was a close fight, a fight that he could have lost. It could have been another L on his record. I'll say that, okay? But he came back with Lara too, man. He was landing some good body shots on Lara. He never was all the way out of that fight. Now, if, if you gave Lara that fight, say 7-5 or 8-4, or to four, I wouldn't have no problem with that because Lara is a great boxer. But Canelo definitely came back and he landed some good shots and he was in that fight. Okay, but again, he learned from that Lara fight. He learned from that, that win. He learned from that fight and he's been off to the races ever since. So that's all I really got for y'all now. Peace and blessings, y'all, in this corner, Boxing 24. Please subscribe to the page. Please leave your comments. Let me know how you feel. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.